So today we're going through part two of the introduction to SketchUp. And so if you have your handout, it's going to be starting at page eight, rendering or actually adding materials and textures or painting in, in SketchUp. So I, I use the term rendering because that's normally what I think of when I think of color. Um, but in, in SketchUp, they, they would like you to say painting or adding textures uh, to your drawing. And so just a couple of, of tips before I, I open up the SketchUp drawing and go through the instructions. You can bring in blocks uh, two ways in SketchUp. You can actually just go directly to 3D Warehouse and then save your SketchUp blocks in a file. So for these exercises under class shares, you can see I've downloaded a lot of blocks. I've, I've got, went ahead and downloaded those, saved them as uh, 2018, and then saved those in class shares. And what you're going to find today is you can actually, and Lauren, I know you already know this, but you can actually just through SketchUp bring bring uh, blocks right into your drawing. And it, that makes it really quick and easy to bring in blocks into your drawing. But I actually like having a folder with some of my favorite SketchUp blocks. So that's just something that I like to do because you find that you have your favorites. So uh, I, I do keep mine in a folder typically, but sometimes if I'm just kind of playing around, I, I will just drop them into the drawing directly. Another tip that I would would like you to to note is you might want to save if you bring in an image, let's say an image for a rug or a piece of art, you might want to save it in two different uh, portrait and landscape orientations. So I'm just going to open up this rug. I snipped this and I didn't do a good snip. That's why it's still there. I snipped this uh, from West Elms. Uh, site and you can quickly just rotate it and then save it as rotated and you're going to see why that's helpful because typically um, I mean it's not too bad but I find that rotating is not that easy in, in um, SketchUp so I, I would rather just do it here let me see if I can so here you can see that we flipped it and I flipped it here and I placed that rotated um, portrait and landscape. I put that in class here. So just when we get there, you can see how much easier it is to do it up front. You know, rotating takes a little more time. And so I'd like to do it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and start the instructions on page eight and then moving to page nine. nine how to add painting, textures, materials, and blocks into your SketchUp drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and open, and you should open up yours if you're following along. I'm going to Class Shares, Interior Design Lab, our class, IMT 122, and I'm opening up my SketchUp folder. And you can see here I've placed a bunch of blocks in there for you to use. And students, you can add your own as well. So we can share this and start building up a nice folder. So I'm going to open up my SketchUp drawing. So it's just been a little, I've added a little more since last week. And you can see what it looks like here. So last week we talked about, uh, we started with a block. We discuss the, the various tools, not all of them, but most of them. We shared a little bit about views, front view, top view. Again, you can use the pan tool, select the hand, press down on your mouse and you can pan. You can also use the orbit tool if you want to orbit. And so today we're going to talk about how did I place some of these textures in my room. So the first thing is just to introduce you to where materials are located. 
And if you don't see this window here, then you're going to want to go to Window, Default Tray, and just make sure that your default tray is activated. So materials, different styles, tags, scenes, etc. So we see that materials is selected, and I can go down here on my default bar, and I can find materials. To select a material, you hit select, and then you go to the drop down menu. And this just gives you some very basic, just like Chief Architect, some very basic materials that are part of the software. So we're going to just start with color. And color is just that. It's not a material, so it doesn't have any texture. It doesn't have any bump. It's simply a color. And we're going to place that color, select a color, and place it on the wall. Place it on the wall just so you can take a look at that. And it's, it's very pumpkin color. So we can play around with that here. Just, just like in other programs, you can play around with that. Again, I just hit the color wheel. You can find maybe a little better color. You can bring in your color. So I had a little problem with opacity here. Um, I was playing around with that earlier. So if you wanted a solid color, it needs to be 100%. And then you can bring that in. So there's a better color uh, right there. And, you know, play around with that and, and get a nice color. You can also use, as most softwares, you can use an eyedropper if you're picking a color or something um, out of an object. So that's just basically adding color. Then you're going to want to add materials. So I'm just going to go to the top view here. And right now I've put in um, a, a nice bleached wood, and that was a custom color. But I'm just going to show you how to put in some basic flooring. Again, materials in the drop down, select, and instead of colors, let's just look at some tile. So, for example, you can put a basic field square tile and drop that in. You can edit your tile by changing the sizes. So, from maybe two feet, I'll just make it twice as big. And there you can see. Here you can edit the color as well, play around with that. Play around with the opacity, and you can do that. You can also go back to materials, and there are, under select, there is a section that says um, found in this drawing, in this model. So as you're starting to build your model and you add materials, they actually start marking the different materials that you've used already. So I can go ahead and, and just copy them in, or I can go to where I just showed you and just look at all the different materials that I've tried to use in my model and find it there. So even if you've changed it a little bit, like I started with some dark wood and some maple wood, and then I decided I wanted to bring my own wood in, you can do that as well. So I'll show you how to bring in custom materials. Uh, but just like the stock materials, you can edit the color and you can play with the size. So if you look at my model, going to see some, some materials that I brought in. So my wall is actually white. So I actually painted it an off-white color. So just to show you what I did, I went to select. I found a color that I liked. I went just down to the bottom. And I put this color in. So it's this color. It's not actually white. But I actually, that's what the color of the wall is. So I actually painted a color on the wall, even though it is just a slight off white. -like. 
I added the same wood to the um, here to the mantle. And I think that looks pretty good. And I did that by just using the eyedropper, bringing back that, and then placing that right there on the mantle. For those of you who, who maybe didn't uh, watch last week's uh, tutorial, when we pushed and pulled in to create this mantle, there wasn't a line right here. All right, there wasn't a line right here. And so I had you take the pencil, click and click to enclose that mantle area and to enclose that mantle area so that it stopped and started. So very similar to Photoshop, when you use the magic wand tool to select an area to receive a color or a material, that area had to be enclosed. So the same is true in Photoshop. So we enclosed our mantle and then we were able to add wood on the mantle and then this wonderful wave detail to, to the fireplace surround. So I'm going I'm to take that off. Well, let's go. Maybe I'll put a different material on the fireplace surround. All right, so this is a wave pattern. And I found this wave pattern uh, in as a seamless texture. So I went online, I saved, I saved the image as a seamless texture, as a JPEG, uh, just like what you've done in Photoshop. And just like in Photoshop, we need to bring that seamless texture into our library. So to do that, create material. So this is in, if you open up your materials, again, create material. Let's call this smaller wave. So I've already brought a wave pattern in. And we need to search for that image. So here is what I really like about the Adobe Suite, Chief Architect, SketchUp. Uh, I find that they are very similar. It's, it's AutoCAD that takes the big leap and it's just like something totally new to learn. So this is what you've done before. You, you've named your material. You've searched for your material. And you're going to bring it in. So I, I found it under class shares. I placed it. It's called the wave wall. I'm going to open that up and now it's here. And I'm going to make it 100% opacity, and I'm going to hit OK. So now my smaller wave is in my materials library. So there it is. And I can select it and bring it into my drawing. So I, I believe it's smaller because I, I added the edited this to make it larger. So I'm going to click on the fireplace. And that looks really nice. How that all works and goes around the corner. I can also edit that and change the scale. So let's just make it half the size. And you can see that's what it looks like smaller. Are there any questions yet, Lauren? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So I, I personally like it bigger, but maybe this time I'll do it six feet. That's a nice size. All right, so here we have a um, our window. So as a recap from last week, you, you went three feet by eight feet, six inches high. You put, brought in your rectangle. Let's first zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna do that again.
So there's the corner. We went in, snapped to that endpoint. So we threw in a rectangle. And we selected that rectangle, used the offset, brought that offset in two inches to enter. And then we use the push and pull, pull it, pull it out one inch. So that's how we did those. And, and now we're gonna look to see how to add the glass. So we're going to add glass, not by deleting this, but by making the interior of this material glass. So what I recommend is to search for material and to go to glass, glass and mirrors. And you have these different choices of mirrors and glass. So I typically use this gray glass, and I'm just going to show you what I like and what I don't like about it. So I'm going to just select it as it is, and I'm going to bring it in. So it's, it's tinted glass. And for me, it doesn't quite look happy, right? I mean, this is a beach house, and it, it's tinted. And this would be great for, I believe, a commercial setting. But I, I just feel that for my, my beach house, it's looking a little dingy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that. And first of all, in the end, I'll just probably copy and paste it over. But let me show you how I brightened those up. First of all, I, I brought up the color so it's not so gray. And then you can also play with the opacity. And that's how I got it to that. You can still see it's a little yeah, pretty darn close. So that's how I got how I like my glass to be rendered. And so I have one student on right now, and she can she can tell me if she uh, does it differently. But that's how I do it. I do put the glass in because when we start to do some photorealism, you want to see the reflection in the glass and you want to see light bouncing off the glass. So we don't just want to make cutouts. We actually want to put in the material of the glass. Next, I would like to bring in uh, some furniture. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. It's gone. And I'm going to show you absolutely I, what I find is probably the best trick in each of my class, I feel like, okay, this is a good trick. It, it, you, you, you. This is like the one thing that I think is very helpful. I always found it difficult to bring in blocks in SketchUp until I found this very simple trick. So unlike Chief Architect, I find that SketchUp is a little more difficult to snap and to place it on the floor. So remember when we first started drawing, we had to keep everything on those nice axes. We had to keep all the walls plumb and undistorted. So the same is gonna be true with bringing in blocks. So I'm gonna bring in a block that I've already saved in 3D Warehouse. excuse me, in class shares, and then we'll go to 3D Warehouse. So to bring in a block that you've already shared. File. Import. And we're going to go to class shares. That's where we're in. We're in class shares, INT 122, SketchUp. And I'm going to have you bring in the Barcelona chair, Mies van der Rohe's Barcelona chair and hit import. And here it is. So you're going to bring it in. And the first thing you want to do is you want to place it pretty close to where you want it. 
and you want to make sure that that on face appears because if you don't that means it's floating in the air so the first thing you want to do is to put it on the face flat on the floor hit click on your mouse so now it's there it's on the face that's the first good thing it's not floating up in space the next thing we want to do is rotate and and rotate is what would cause me grief in the past. But if you follow this trick, and I, I wanna say it's a simple trick, and hopefully I won't mess it up. Um, simple trick, it will make rotating a lot easier. So first of all, you wanna make sure that your rotation device is on the face. So, so you just saw that it said, it's on the face and it's blue. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take that, make sure it's blue, and you're wanting to click on your mouse on one side of the block, release, drag across nice and straight, and when you're re I just saw the end point of the group, click again, drag out, so I've stayed on that nice same axis, click on your mouse, and rotate, and I and I should wrote I shouldn't release my finger until it goes green. See how it went dash green, and then release. So now it's on the face. I've rotated it nice and easy, and this takes some practice. And so I'm going to try to be very clear of what I'm doing with my my mouse. So now I'm going to select the crossbars are the move tool. And I'm going, to make, I'm going to make sure I get my end point of my group again, and I'm just going to move it over. Release. So group, click down on your mouse, and pull. I'm on the red axis. So if you've noticed, I tried to stay on the axis. And if all is well, I'm not floating up in space. So I'm going to do bring in another object that I've saved in class shares, and I'm going to just repeat the steps. File, import. I'm, this time I'll bring in the floor lamp. It's on the face. So this has a very big block around it, but that's okay. So, but I want to make sure that it says on face. So I'm clicking on my mouse. Click. It's placed now. So now I will select the move tool and I'm going to bring it into this corner. And you have to be very careful when you move because you want to stay on the nice axis. So so your nice block stays on the floor. I just clicked on my mouse on the corner of the block and I'm pulling up on the green axis. You see it's green, release. I'm clicking on my group again on the corner and now I'm gonna go the other way. Do you see it's still red? Click, drag, release. And now we're going to rotate it. So I want this to be on an angle and I want it to just kind of come into to this room. So I will rotate it by selecting the rotate tool. Blue on the face. Click on the corner of the group, click on my mouse. Release, drag across. Click on the other corner, pull out, and rotate. And get that where the angle that you want, you can click. So I I found this to be quite miserable for a while <laughs> until I started getting the hang of that.
You can also bring in blocks that directly from the 3D warehouse. Here you can see I'm looking at the top of my mantle and I forgot to put a wood finish on the top of my mantle, so I'm gonna have to do that. I guess it's not a big deal because I wouldn't see it in the perspective. So next is to bring in a sofa. So we're gonna to go to Windows and the 3D Warehouse. And you do have to sign in before you can have access. So this, is, this wasn't always the case, but now you need to sign in. So I'll just do the sofa, one more sofa, and then I'll show you how to bring in an area rug. File, import. Now do I have a, a nice sofa here? Okay, so let's just look to see how my, my room, so I have a sofa, I have a chair, but you see that I have a coffee table and I have a piece of art. What's really fun is in, if you visit a 3D warehouse, and I'll probably add some of these to class share. There's some nice logs with some fire, fire going and, or some glass with some fire. So I'll probably place a couple of those in, in class shares for you to work with. And the next thing I, I would like you to look at is, is how I created an area rug and how I put a backdrop in. So let's see, from top view, the first thing I did was I used the rectangle tool, created a nice deck and put the same wood on the outside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get rid of that and that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to actually apply the image to that rectangle. Okay, so I clicked on the left corner, I clicked on the right corner, and now I'm pulling up. So I've placed the rectangle to represent where I'm going to put the image for landscaping. And I'm going to bring in an image that I've saved as a JPEG and I'm going to click and I'm going to bring it in on this rectangle. So something I made a note in your instructions that there's also something called domes, which are these rounded dome-like structures that have like skies and landscape. But this is if you want to place a background, just like in Chief Architect, into your drawing. So let's just say there was a view of the beach outside of your client's home and you wanted to put that there. This is one way to do that. File, import, and I have an image, so you can see that it's not a 3D block. So all these SketchUp drawings are blocks. And here you can see an image. And I'm just calling it the dunes. And I'm bringing that in. So there it is. And I want to place it there in my drawing. So then when I go back to my 3D view, you can take a look at that out the window. So that doesn't look right, right? So maybe you need to scale it. So you can scale it, and we haven't used this tool yet. So to the left of offset is scale. And you can see that some handles um, have come up. So you can do a couple of things. You can use the side handle and proportionately bring that down out your window. Or you can use one of the middle handles and, and skew that a little bit. 
And so it's just, you need to play with that so that you get a good view out the window. So here, here's probably what I would do. I would bring in a silhouette of a person so that I can gauge where the horizon line should be. Because, you know, the ocean, unless you're up in an apartment or up high in a condo or up on a hill, you know, usually you stand on the beach and your eyes hit the ocean. So I'm going to bring in a silhouette. She's on the face. Ooh, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good there. So that was, I, I gauged pretty well that if she's looking out, she sees the ocean. Next is bringing in an area rug. So I went to West Elm. I used the snip tool on my computer and I snipped out an image of an area rug. That image came in portrait and then I quickly flipped it landscape and saved it as a horizontal image. And this just makes it a lot easier to bring in instead of trying to rotate an image. So let's just see how we do that. So you could just bring in something, but typically I like to bring in a rectangle first. I'm on the surface. Click, release. Don't click yet because I'm going to make it an 8 by 10 rug. So 10 feet comma 8 feet. There it is. Next, I'm going to just, I'm going to pull that up just so that it's a quarter of an inch off the floor, just so the rug has a little thickness, because it would if there's a pile or even if it's woven, if there's a little bit of a pad underneath, you're going to want to pull that up. Up. 0.25. Enter. So it's just the, a little bit off of the ground, so just a little bit of the edge. Now, just like I did for that backdrop, I'm going to bring in a, a, um, a rug. So file, import, and I'm going to bring my rug that's nice and horizontal, woven rug that I rotated. So I'm going to bring it in. Oh, wrong one. Didn't it say rotated? <laughs> Let's try that. Let's see if I file, import, Let's try the desktop. Let's see. Oh, bummer. I'm going to have to rotate it. And that's how you bring in a rug. So let's look at my. So you're going to want to put some type of frame material on the frames of your glass. You can bring in pillows, art, flame, different materials. And then next week, we're going to render. So I'm just going to pause here for a second, take a little break, and then start the recording again, because we're going to want to look at some different styles and some different scene selections. When I place the coffee table on top of the carpet, it, it, it was really, you know, quite easy, but I, I did raise the table that quarter of an inch. And just because the it was being, you know, we, I placed it on the face, and so I raised it a quarter inch so that it, it would sit actually where it is. So the fun part is now adding your 
materials and personalizing your space. And so you're going to want to get that view just where you want it. And you can actually set scenes so to save that angle. So the remainder of this of this exercise is for you this week to complete your drawing. And then next week, before we move into your semester project, we'll just talk about rendering styles, SU podium a little bit. But I, I do want you to wait until you know you've completed the room in a way that you're comfortable with, that you know, that you're excited about. When you're all done, you're going to want to essentially build the roof like in Chief Architect. You're going to want to use the rectangle tool and you're going to want to bring that back again. So I have the white, which is the correct side, but because I'm working with an interior, I want to right click on my mouse and I want to reverse the face. I did that so now, closed it up for me. So now the correct side is in the interior. So you can build a coffered ceiling so you can draw another rectangle within here and push up. So you can act, actually build something that looks like a soffit. There's a difference between, a, I guess that, that would be a tray ceiling. So a tray ceiling is when you push up. A soffit is when you build a soffit around the room that makes it look like that is pushed up. So that's, you can do that. Again, you can use the measuring tool if you want to come in two feet, for example. You can then bring your rectangle tool. And this time push up, pull up, maybe eight inches. And then from the interior, you can see now I have a a nice little ceiling detail that should be pulled out, I believe, further from the fireplace. So maybe you need to come out three feet on the edge, but you can just see how you can start adding interest. I also gave instructions how to use what's called the follow me tool. And that's on page 13 at the bottom. So what the follow me tool means is that you can go into the 3D warehouse and you can find, for example, a profile edge of a crown molding. And you can place that crown molding in the corner and you can tell the computer to follow it around the edge. So you can place a crown molding. So that's something you can do. That's probably a little more advanced for this class. But if, you know, a few of you like Lauren, you've had experience with SketchUp. So you might want to practice your follow me tool. If you're not going to use Podium, so in Podium, we, we can actually, just like Chief Architect, we're going to actually next week, we're going to bring in recess can lights and things like that and, and, and illuminate your space and then render it. We'll do that next week. I just want you to have this done so that you can have something to work on. And if you don't have Podium, which I never did at home, I kind of cheated to put in recess can lights, and this is how I cheated. I would go in from my top view, and I would actually just put some circles in. These are huge, but circles. And then I can make them 
I'll make them six inches, for example. I could select the center and hit delete on my keyboard. So they look, <laughs> they look like can lights. Uh, that's just a, a little cheat you can do for that. Um, so if you want to add some can lights, you can do that. Uh, if, if not, next week we'll, we'll actually put some lights in and just wrap up. But for next week, I would like you to have, be as far along as possible. 